Hey everyone, let's say you want to get somewhere, and by that I mean you have a point A in mind and a point B in mind. Point A is where you're standing, you know where that is. Point B is, well, some arbitrary distance away, or perhaps it's your friend's house, perhaps it's a structure you've located on the seed map, but whatever the case is, this is your problem. You've got a lot of distance to go. Maybe it's somewhere between zero and this really big number I've calculated. And that's a huge inconvenience to travel all that way, maybe with Elytra, fireworks, or whatever. Now, here's what I'm going to show you. We have point A here, and in the setup we've also got point B, which is some 700 blocks away. And I'm going to show you how I use this machine and the power of encoding data into the durability of slightly broken hose to travel all this distance entirely autonomously away from my keyboard and stop directly where I needed to end up. So first off, let's start off with flying machines in general. Most of them will just fly until you tell them to stop by your own player action. And this is because it's really difficult to stick any sort of timing mechanism onto a flying machine. All these methods that people would normally use either don't stick, like these two, or just completely pop off, making m almost all redstone componentry entirely useless on a flying machine. However, one very special thing that can be moved by flying machine is you yourself, the player, as well as anything in your inventory. And by far one of the most information dense ways to pack something into a slot in the player's inventory is the durability of a tool, specifically the hoe. Because with a hoe in both our offhand and our main hand, we can store up to 4062 hits of durability. And we can detect all of these hits of durability by hoeing individual pieces of dirt, and the moment it breaks, we stop hoeing that dirt, and this is a change we can detect. Okay, so I gave you the general concept. You hoe dirt, flying machine goes, but we have a couple questions. Number one, how the hell did we even pull this off? How do we detect this? And number two, how is this machine not already instantly garbage? Because the thing is, first off, we're burning netherite hose for distance, which is already suboptimal. But also, 4062 blocks with two netherite hose is not very much. That's not very much distance. So this is totally useless. But the thing is, is that it's not. Because somehow this thing can travel 85,302 blocks. So how did we scale it up to being able to travel 85,302 blocks? Let's start with the hoe detector. First off, we've got these wall blocks. And the thing about these wall blocks is that when this end rod comes in front of it, Nothing happens, because the end run doesn't stick to the wall and doesn't cause a change, this observer sees nothing. But when the dirt block comes in front of it, this is a change. The wall changes shape, and thus, this observer triggers and this piston stops the engine. But when the player hoes it again, it changes back to a similar shape, that of the end rod, and thus, this observer detects the second change and starts the engine again. And this can be seen like so. But wait. How did we scale it up? Well, we've got this piston feed tape here, and what happens is every single time the engine moves forward and it's not stopped by this end rod, because it's not a full block, it moves forward again. And it also moves this piston feed tape, which cycles 21 blocks of end rods, with one of them being swapped out for a dirt block. Meaning for every 21 blocks we travel, it checks the player to see if it's got any hoe durability left and uses one hoder ability, meaning we're effectively multiplying this distance by 21. So you've basically already learned all of the mechanics that result in this thing functioning. We've got the scalar upper, and we've got the dirt detector. So what's this massive hunk of garbage in the back? And the sole purpose of this is to keep the machine from exploding from its own actions, because this thing just slows down the entire cycle by an absurd amount, giving time for the slow piston feed tape to activate, as well as the slow trigger mechanism. Unfortunately, this results in an excruciatingly slow flying machine, at least compared to even the simplest of flying machines, the speed difference is easily noticeable. But you're away from your keyboard, so I mean, I guess you could just go do something else. Doesn't matter how slow it is, even if you're traveling 85,302 blocks. So in a very real case scenario, we've got this golden hoe here with 16 durability on it. And if we multiply it by 21, the amount of end rods, or rather the amount of blocks in this piston feed tape, we get 336 blocks traveled. 
and here's point A and roughly 336 blocks in that direction, there's going to be a sign that says point B on it. And if we get into this minecart, switch to survival mode, and then hit use continuous, we should start hoeing the dirt automatically. Then we can warp through time a little bit. And you're going to start to see that we're going to carefully lose every single bit of durability on this golden hoe. And in just a moment, we should arrive at our destination. And we kind of overshot a bit because my calculation sucked with a discrepancy of I can't be bothered to calculate. But this f discrepancy is flat, meaning over 84,000 blocks, that's certainly not going to compound into any distance at all. It's just going to be like 20 blocks. Something cool is that this project is actually derived of a previous project. This is a month old project that I discontinued because it, I deemed it impossible. And it was the dolphin and hoe based flying machine, not the hoe based flying machine. And the reason it worked the way it was is because instead of settling for a counter that essentially scaled up the value of our individual hoes, we simply settled for having infinitely many more hoes to accommodate for the lack of distance. And we do this by storing them in this little chamber, and every time the player broke one, they'd play it, pick up another. And the purpose of the dolphin was to keep recycling their item counts. Not their item counts, their despawn timers. Because every time the dolphin picks up the item, it resets to 5 minutes, meaning we can store infinite of them. Problem is, like you just saw there, that hoe just flew out. And that would then lag behind and get thrown out of the flying machine. And that's why this thing never worked. All the hoes would spew everywhere and get strewn across the floor. And we'd lose our data basically once every 10 blocks we flew. Therefore, I discontinued the project. Even more niche thing. This project was based on, the dolphin one, was based on a post I saw a while ago made by somebody on Bedrock Edition, who made a flying machine that used snowballs and dispensers hitting target blocks to time the amount of distance it flew. And this, um, this dispenser here stores a certain amount of snowballs, and when it runs out, it stops flying. This kind of spurred the idea of a dispen of a flying machine that could have a timer built into it to fly only a certain distance. But and I'm showing this to you right now with the power of mods, because you can't move dispensers in Java Edition, which was why I didn't just make this. Anyways, that'll be it for today's video. I'm posting schematic, even though I think you probably shouldn't build this because it's really slow and impractical in reality. Um it was a fun neat mini neat mini project because well, it's actually usable, and it actually ended up working, despite the fact that it was a slog of over a month and a half of lazy developmental changes to a project that I never thought would actually work. So, anyways, that's it for today. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for whatever I got in store. Blah blah blah. Bye.